Have Acoustica Audio made an end game mix bus compressor? Let's find out. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Acoustica Audio's new mix bus compressor plugin, Fire the Bus Plus. Let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. If you watch my videos, you'll know that I don't really do the whole science thing. The point of my videos are really just to listen how a plugin sounds, how it reacts in real world situations. So what I've done is I've replaced my mix bus compressor, which was the UAD SSL, with the Acoustica Audio mix bus compressor. And we're going to be listening to the different models that they've modeled here and just basically hearing how it sounds. I'm going to run through the plugin very quickly. It's a very simple plugin, as you can see. There's more detail in the manual if you want to read that, but it's only like a 10 page manual. So very, very simple. Starting from the top, dry wet for parallel compression. Here we have four different compressors modeled. I'm not exactly sure what they've modeled. I have a fairly good idea. It doesn't say in the manual, but I'm sure somebody will know online if you want to check it out. Here we have a combined attack and release slider, makeup gain, gain reduction meter, and we have a filter down here, which will change how it reacts to the low end, basically. I'm assuming this is 300 hertz. You can change the size and you have oversampling here. One thing I will say with the size change is I use a PC and I use Studio One Six, Windows 10. If I change the size, it doesn't change it straight away. I have to unload the plugin, reload the plugin, and then the new size is activated. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's not, it's not really a big deal. I tend to have my plugin set to one size and then I leave it. So once I've set it once, that's it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So as I said, this is a track that I've mixed for a client. I've had to mute the vocals because it's quite a well-known artist. Well, it's not quite a well-known artist. It is a well-known artist. So I've had to mute their vocals. So this normally does have vocals in it. And I've replaced my SSL with the Acoustica Audio Mix Bus Compressor. Now, just to explain very, very quickly, I mix top down. So the first thing I do is I add my mix bus processing. Uh, these plugins here are not really doing anything at the moment. Tiny little bit of compression in the mid range with the Pro C2, but not really very much. Better Maker just adding a little bit of top and bottom, kind of like a Bax type EQ, and the limiter's not doing anything at all. But as I said, that doesn't really matter because the point of this is I want to show this mix bus compressor in a real mix bus glue situation. You know, I didn't see the point in showing it on individual instruments because that's probably not how you're going to use this. I want to show it in a real world situation. So what we'll do is we'll listen to the track. I'll just put it into bypass uh, and then I'll start playing around with it and getting that kind of mix bus glue. Okay, now when I do mix bus compression, I don't tend to have very much going on. Never more than uh, one decibel of gain reduction. Uh, also, there's no auto gain on this either, so I'm, I'm having to do this by ear. So I'm, I do apologize if it's not exact. Also, once I've dialed in the compression, I quite often take this back to around about 75, between 60 and 75%, depending on what mix bus compressor I'm using. I my aim is to glue the track, is to just give it some kind of, um, before I do anything else, I do this, by the way, just explaining, as I said, I only want to do top down mixing. So I start with the mix bus. And the reason why I, I do that, it's not for everybody, but it's just how I've always mixed since the 80s. I like to be able to quite quickly get a good overall sound of the mix without touching anything else. So the mix bus compressor, was the first thing that we touched on SSL desks in the 80s. We would, you know, get that sort of nice glued sound before we touched anything else. And then we would work downwards, basically, onto the buses, then onto the individual instruments. So I'm going to, what I am going to do on this is I'm probably going to push it a little bit further than I normally would because 
you're not really going to be able to hear it. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really subtle. But just listen to how, listen to the dynamic, the dynamics of the song. Listen to how things might poke out a little bit. The hi hats might poke out a little bit. Some of the top end instruments might poke out a little bit. And what I'm doing with the mix bus compression, compression is just bringing it all in, sort of gluing it together. So listen to how this compressor and the different models on the compressor affect the transients and just the overall sort of cohesion of, of the track. For me, the most noticeable thing is how the snare works with the clap. That's probably the part, like if I was to look at a spectrum analyzer, that's probably the part that would be poking out. And it's grabbing hold of that and it's bringing it in and it's kind of opening it all up as well at the same time, which is, which is nice. It's got a nice sound to it. So let's let's flick through the different models and I'm going to keep that all the way to wet as well so you can you can hear what the compressor is doing you know I, I can't if I had it if I had it as subtle as I would do on an actual mix you're probably not really going to be able to hear it so like I said I'll keep that quite down quite down quite fast uh makeup production I mean makeup gain sorry uh probably around about one I'm guessing because I'm going to go for about one decibel of gain reduction and I'm going to bring this up a little bit, probably to around about, hmm, I mean, if, if that's halfway, let's take it to about 80. It says about 90 up here, whether that's actually correct, I don't know. Let's just check. Oh yeah, it seems to be, so okay, let's take that down to about 80. Straight away, I can hear that with this one on, it does actually affect the bottom end quite a lot, whereas this one doesn't seem to. It seems to let a lot more bottom end through. This one makes the bottom end sound tighter for me. transparent that one but it's nice again it's just reeling in the that is kind of squashing the claps and the snares together Let's just push it a little bit further listen to how the claps the snares and the kick drum just suddenly kind of they're all pushed together and they just sound like they're with each other rather than being a little bit random and a little bit kind of out there in fact actually let's go into bypass first listen to it in bypass listen to how the claps the snares and the kick drum are then when i take it out of bypass it stays quite transparent i'd say there's not an awful lot of character in there for me on this one and but it brings it all together Sounds like a tiny roll off in the high end as well on this one. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, 
again, this has got a nice sort of roundness to it. Now, I'm probably, you, you're probably thinking, well, he's saying the same thing about all of these. <laughs> I kind of am. And to be honest, the differences are very, very subtle. For me as a mastering engineer, just from doing this for so many years, I, I can hear the subtleties, but they are super, super subtle. And I, you know, I, I it, it, is it really enough to warrant the four different, you know, the four different options? You know, are you really going to go, okay, let's listen to this one. Let's swap to that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a major difference. This one was probably the most different for me. I'm just sort of kind of doing this very, very quickly. You know, this is not a real detailed look into each different model. These three sound quite similar. I haven't decided which one I like best. Let's just listen to this one again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through each one, one after the other. I'm going to try and keep it around about one decibel of gain reduction because uh, they all sort of react very, very slightly differently. And then you can listen to all four of them um, in the same situation. This is going to be on the fly, so it's not going to be super accurate. So I have to make quite a large adjustment for that one. These three are quite similar in terms of how much, how they react. This one, as you saw, I had to push the threshold right up. So, you know, it's, you know, with such a quick video and not going into too much detail, not trying it on loads of different sources, it's difficult to really show you the subtleties that there are between the four different models. But there are subtle differences. Definitely there are subtle differences. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this right off and. Let's take it back to about there and run through them again, this time without the filter on. So it's going to react to the low end a lot, a lot more. Okay, and we'll roll through the different models again. Because we're going for mix bus glue here, like I explained earlier on, listen to how it gets all pulled in together, how it glues together. And most of all, listen to, I think that the easiest way for you to hear the glue would be how the hi-hats, the, the snares, the claps, and the kick drum just all seem like they've just got a bit closer to each other, like they're hugging each other, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Actually, I'm starting to warm to this one. I'm just going to set this up how I would probably set up my mix bus compressor on a track like this. So there you have it, Acoustica Audio's new Mixbus compressor plugin via the Bus Plus. 
Now, it was a bit difficult to really demonstrate this plugin because the, the art of mix bus compression is for it to be quite subtle. And, you know, you really don't want to be pushing too much gain reduction. You just really want to be gluing things subtly. I, I mean, there's no rules. I mean, you can compress the hell out of it if you if you like but i wanted to show the the plugin in a real world situation like how i would in the way i would use it so my mix bus compression tends to be quite subtle so it is quite difficult to demonstrate with the subtle with the subtleties of mix bus compression there, there are differences in the models they're very slight um if i went into a lot more detail change the filter change the attack and release and you know, and push the game reduction a little bit more. Try it on different sources. All that kind of, all those kind of things. You'd probably hear a, a more of a difference. But it's really a quick video. I just wanted to really demonstrate it as a mix bus compressor, just so that you can hear how it sounds. How does it sound? Yeah, it sounds. It sounds good. You know, it, it, it's. I haven't used it enough yet to decide whether it will replace the usual mix bus compressor plugins that I use. I've used an SSL for years. I do tend to reach for an SSL. I tend to reach for UAD's SSL. Would it replace that? I don't really feel that the, and this is just my opinion, I don't really feel that any of the models were very SSL style. I'm not exactly sure what they've modeled. I don't think they've modeled an SSL, so that would probably be why. But they sound more, more along the lines of a Neve, um, mix bus compressor, that kind of thing. They're, they're very tuby, uh, very warm sounding, quite spongy. Um, if you've used acoustic audios, El Ray, for instance, that one of the, one of the compressors they modeled sounds quite similar to that. I do use that quite a lot. I use that in mastering very subtle, but more to kind of imprint a character. Anyway, I'm, I'm mumbling now. Um, so I can't personally say whether I would replace my normal mix bus that I would reach for, mix bus compressor that I'd reach for, because I haven't used it enough yet. And I want to be honest, it's decent. It's simple to use. You can dial it in very, very quickly. One of the things I, I'm, I don't like about it is I like to have a little bit more control over my mix bus compression. I like to be able to individually change the attack and release and the ratio. So if if you if the if you want that kind of control, this is probably not the plugin for you. But if you want to dial in very quickly a really nice mix bus glue, it's definitely decent for that. Everyone's question is going to be CPU because it's acoustic audio. I use a lot of acoustic audio plugins. I've been using them for years, and I will say that they're they've improved massively on CPU. It doesn't use hardly any at all. Most of their, I think all of their Fire plugins are really low on CPU. There's a zero latency version as well, of course, the ZL version. Uh, so if, you know, if you're worried about that kind of thing, it's not really something that bothers me because mix bus compression is something I tend to do whilst I'm mixing. So, uh, you know, latency isn't really a problem. So overall conclusion, do I like the plugin? Yes, I do. I need to spend more time with it. It's definitely worth trying out. It's a good price. And you have four different models, you know, so what they're doing it for 69 euros, I think. So, you know, you're getting four different compressors for less than 20 euros each. So, yeah, definitely check it out. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.